Howdy folks, my name is Dirk Tharp and welcome to Carolina's Concrete Cowboy. Today we're going to have some fun looking at non-destructive concrete testing using ye old Swiss hammer, the rebound hammer itself. So saddle up, let's ride. To begin, let's talk about the name of this apparatus. It is known as a mechanical rebound, mechanical rebound impact hammer, any of those are interchangeable. But understanding the history will let you know all the names because they all mean the same thing. Ernst Schmidt, a Swiss engineer, invented the rebound hammer test. Thus, in the industry, it's called a Schmidt hammer, it's called a rebound hammer, and honestly, those of us in the concrete industry just call it the Swiss hammer. Nine times out of ten, you hear people say, we got a Swiss hammer. Its purpose is to help determine the in-place strength of concrete. That's its basic good, is the in-place strength. It also can be used to help determine if a, uh, if a slab is questionable, is it in good shape. There's a lot of things people do with it on the side, but I only use the instrument for what it's, what the spec's written for, which is an indicator of in-place strength of concrete. To understand the rules behind this apparatus and the procedure, I refer you to ASTM C805. The reason I say that is you're going to go on the internet and you're going to see all kinds of different instructions, which I think to be honest, if they don't match C805 or opinions, and it may be written by an engineer, but still, the whole key to testing, folks, is to be on the same page universally, so no matter where we are, we're getting results that can be compared. So to do that, do yourself a favor, stick to ASTM C805. So now let's look at how the tool works. The first step is to determine where you're going to test the concrete. If you have a broomed surface or an older surface, meaning it's several year old concrete or 40 year old concrete, you, you're going to use the rub stone included in the packet or bring your own rub stone. If this is a broomed surface like a typical sidewalk or driveway, you need to rub the surface till you get it smooth because those little ridges, even though they're very tiny, do affect the hammer. The second thing is, these are the rules before you begin. No frozen concrete. Cannot test frozen concrete with the hammer. Wet concrete, honestly you're wasting your time. Uh, wet concrete throws off the results. You need to let it dry thoroughly before you do it. Thirdly, the old concrete like this, this is um, probably a 20 year old slab. The truth is, there's so much carbonation built up in the surface of that concrete that you get distorted results. So, uh, and we'll look at how to read this in a second. But for example, I just plunged in this, this old uh, bib of concrete and I'm already up to a reading of, of uh, 50 and going up the scale, that's 8,000 PSI. I seriously doubt this is 8,000 PSI. This is probably 4,000 PSI and it's got some age on it, so it may be up in the high fours. But you see what I'm saying? The, the very fact of concrete being outside and what happens with carbon as it, as it uh, embeds into the surface of concrete can give you a false reading of hardness. But that's not the purpose of this, of this test anyway. This is for gauging in-place strength of concrete it could be because I'm a precast guy and I want to know how, how my uh, structures before I ship them are shaping up. Um, so it's an indicator where I can see where we are at the moment. But it's also there to help us in times of uh, questionable concrete. Say there's a low break incident and you're thinking this concrete's not up to strength. Then this is, this is one of the go-to tests. It's non-destructive. What does that mean? It means all I'm doing is tapping the concrete and recording the rebound. 
so it does not harm in place concrete at all that's why uh, this is a favorite to start the conversation I am not here to make a jurisdictional rule on when is it valid when is it not no sir in a commercial job there's going to be um, an engineer an owner an architect, there's uh, uh, the general contractor, the finisher, there's a whole stream of people involved in the process in commercial work. Same with DOT. This is an in-place indicator. It is not intended for two things. It's not intended for concrete acceptance and it's not intended for concrete rejection or, or decree of failure. It is a step in the process. So if I have a uh, an embankment, I'm out there with DOT and it needs to be 2,500, a cylinder came back low, and we're, we're DOT and I are doing readings all over the embankment, the, the concrete that goes under the bridge, for example. Um, and all of us come up with 33,000, 3,200. Well, we may as a whole go, well, you know, I feel safe. It's non-structural concrete, let's leave it in place. But in the case of structural concrete, Yes, that's, that's where it gets serious. And you're going to find out what kind of trend do we have on the decision to leave it in place, but you still may have to go to the next level, which is destructive testing, drawing an actual core out of the concrete. Now, all that's another story for another day. I'm just explaining this is not a definitive do-all, be-all test. It is an indicator, and it is a tool that can be used wisely to really help tell a situation of concrete in place. So with all that said, let's look at what's the next steps in testing. What are the rules? As I said, you're going to select your areas. Here I used the piece of chalk and I drew a circle. Now the, the target, the circle needs to be six inches in diameter per ASTM C805. Inside the test, inside the circle, you're going to do 10 readings. You're going to record the readings. You're always going to have a pad pen out on the job site. And, and you're going to do multiple tests in most cases, so label it. I, la I labeled this one C3. Why? Because it's the Carolina's Concrete Cowboy, that's why. So our target C3, we're going to test and get an average reading. We can have these all over the slab. And that's why you got to name each, and that's why I use chalk so I know where I was. So when everybody's reviewing it, this could even be a driveway where you're going over it with the homeowners and the concrete guys. You still want to be able to show, hey, I got this here and this here. So once you're organized and you've already got your surfaces ready, we've talked about the rub stone. What I didn't tell you is if it's a hard trial like this sample I poured, you don't have to rub it at all. It's good to go as is. Um, Understand the age of the concrete before you begin. In most cases, you're going to be around that one month old when there's a questionable break coming back. It could be six weeks, whatever. Just kind of know where you are in the ballpark. Lastly, before we look at how to use it, if we are in, if I'm just trying to figure out if a driveway is fine, I'm honestly happy with these results and I don't hurt the driveway. But if we're in a Say we're doing a, a, a commercial job like Sam's Club or, or BJ's or Costco, any of those guys. Honestly, you need to do some correlation work where you take cylinders of the mix that's going to be in place and go ahead and do some comparisons with the cylinders between what broke the actual results and what your hammer reads. And then you're going to need to interpolate those results. But let's get back to doing it the simple way. And what do we do next? We've identified our target. I'm going to show you how to use the actual Swiss hammer. It is a probe. That's the hammer end. A spring with a known, um, a known apparatus inside that as it releases force, that force is a constant and that's what you're calibrating so that it records the impact or the rebound and that's the numbers you average. Once again, you're going to average 10 readings. Anything that is six above or six below the average gets thrown out. You can throw out one. If I have two readings that deviate, 
by six, I've got to throw out that test and start over in another spot and do another set of 10. First step is warm up your spring. I just hit it five times on concrete to get it warmed up. Now we're just gonna do one for you to see how it works. I'm just going in the center. I push, you hear the rebound. This is the locking button. I push it in and lift, the hammer stays. Now come in close and we're gonna see the result. If you can, you can see that is a 40 on the meter. It's a 40. What does that mean? I'm gonna show you, we're gonna roll this slowly. There's a 40. I look at my graph and I see A, B, C. B is how I just hit the hammer straight down, which means I use the top line to read. This line on the graph is for when I direct straight into a slab. So 40 coming up to the top line, going over is 5,500 PSI. Now, this concrete is almost a month old and it was poured using Sackcrete 5000 plus. So it rings true. That's a, that's, a, that's a legitimate result that I would expect because when I poured it, I poured it on the dry side. It's not quite a month old and I imagine it will be higher at the end of the month. But that gives you an idea. Now, I'm gonna stop the camera, do 10 readings, record them, average them, and we'll come back and look again at how to read the results. So we took our 10 readings in the circle. We came up with 39.2, so that was the average of 10. Nothing's outside of six, so nothing gets discarded. Now, trying to split that little teeny hair, you could call it 5450 PSI, but ASTM C805 says round up to the next hole, and so that would be a 40, and 40 on the chart is 5,500. And we'll, we'll let you look at that one more time up close. 40 on the chart, top line, 5,500 PSI. So that concludes our discussion of the Schmidt Swiss Rebound Hammer. I hope you've learned something today. Uh, it's definitely a tool you can use on your projects. If you are a homeowner and, and have questions, honestly, most ready-mix companies own one of these in their quality control, control department. Um, and they're absolutely be glad to, to, to come out and share results with you. So when in doubt, give a little in-place test that's non-destructive. My name is Dirk Tharp. This has been the Carolinas Concrete Cowboy, and until next time, yippee Kaye Concrete. Legal Disclaimer The views expressed by the Carolinas Concrete Cowboy, although profound, and his actions, albeit masterful, are his and his alone. If you've enjoyed these videos, please like and subscribe to us on our YouTube channel, Carolina's Concrete Cowboy. And by all means, we look for your feedback. If you've got a, uh, a session you'd like us to do or some questions you'd like answered, give me the feedback below or email me at carolinasconcretecowboy at gmail.com. Happy trails.